like after after a hit film if my fan mail was this much i said okay yeah wow it's done well and if my fan mail was this much that means uh, people recognize they used to come up and say we really like you and this and, and we gave an autograph we didn't have selfies and i i miss those days and some boy hit me on my back and i turned and looked at him and he said that's the girl i want for my next film english film hindi film what because i don't know hindi <laughs> Um, one film that I really regret, regret not doing was that, that dancing around the trees and romancing. I mean, hey, I, I no complaints. It's great to have an entourage, you know. If the producer can afford it, why not? Entourage looks really cool. But me as a person, I can't. I'm not one of those people who say that. Oh, you know, you just ignore it. Something is written negative about me. I take it to heart. The first day of shoot, I was mortified because I had 30 men in my living room. I in my head, I was done with, you know, acting. The transition from films to sitting in an office, being a jewelry uh, designer, learning everything from my dad, it was the most difficult transition of my life your stardom is taken away from you my choice was to leave when i was at the top hi guys this is ankita you're tuned to bollywood bubble and i think it's time to take a trip back down the memory lane but with a twist of also touching down the future basis because nilam kothari is going to take me to actually how it is to be the star for how long exactly i think i'm going to ask her starting <laughs> from the teen days to now ruling hearts how does it feel to be the absolute sweetheart uh, of crowd it's, it's all i can say is that i'm i, I feel blessed and it's um, you know sometimes i pinch myself and i i ask myself is this for real like is this really happening because okay the 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 popularity and the love that i'm seeing right now like this phase of my life i I never imagined it, and uh, it's surreal sometimes. And uh, yeah, I just feel blessed. <laughs> you started way too young, Neela. I mean, uh, that inimpressionable age of just teens. How was it working then? Because I feel that understanding your stardom at that age <clears throat> would have been a little difficult than what you are seeing now. I had no idea. I was clueless. I swear to God, I was clueless, and I think so many people. I was clueless. I was ap- actually unaware of my popularity and my fame. I don't want to sound pompous no. here, but because I I could engage. Yes, I could tell by my fan mail. Like after after a hit film, if my fan mail was this much, I said, "Okay, yeah, wow, it's done well." And if my fan mail was this much, that means uh, the film didn't do that well. But but. Honestly like there were no selfies in those days there were no cameras i mean uh, phones so yes if people recognize they used to come up and say we really like you and this and, and we gave an autograph oh, I love that. those days of sel- we didn't have selfies and i i missed those days i felt it was so simple and and very sweet and like back to your question you said uh, um you know how could you gauge i think i was just so young and um i was very protected by my family also so we had no social media there was just no way of sort of uh really realizing how popular one was you also missed on i would say the college years per se because yes. you were working non stop there was yes. a time i think you were working almost on so many films i think there's a credit list i have seen of your films raging well, from the particular era when i joined films the initial plan was to do the one film and the go one back <laughs> oh guys there is a fun story if neelam would give us a little uh, please neelam tell that i have read about it i know that so i my parents got this offer uh, ramesh behel ji um uh, i'm very friendly with goldie and nanu and everyone yes. i was at nanu's birthday party and rameshi was was taking a you know a filming the birthday party oh. and i used to visit bombay every year and i they were my friends this building friends and some boy hit me on my back and i turned and looked at him and then he saw it obviously the footage later 
And he said, that's the girl I want for my next film. <laughs> so he called up my mom, my dad in Hong Kong, and then we moved to Bangkok. And uh, he was persistent. Yes. My parents were saying no. Okay. And he was persistent. He said, no, please, you know, just this one, just one film. So one day out of the blue, my father over lunch told me that, you know, oh, by the way, you've got a um, film offer. I said, what do you mean I've got a film offer? Like, like English film, Hindi film, what? Because I don't know Hindi. <laughs> <laughs> That is so funny. English film or Hindi. <laughs> so he said Hindi film and it's, um, you know, uh, Nanu, Shishti and, and Goldie's dad. So I was like, listen, the next time I go to Bombay, let me meet. Let's see what it's all about, exactly. you know. I, anyway, cut a long story short, I did my screen test and I just loved being in front of the camera. Wow. And I told my parents that, you know what, let me please do this one film. You're what, 15, 16, I, I guess? 15, oh 16. <laughs> me at 16, let's not talk about yeah, it. Yeah, so yes. I said, you know what, let me just do this one film. At least I can tell my grandchildren I did one film. <laughs> one Hindi film. To put uh, yeah. And, you know, one thing led to another. Um, the initial plan was to do this one film and go back to school, studies and everything. <clears throat> and I, the first film released and um, the second offer came in and then the third and then the fourth. And I was here to stay. Okay. Did you ever miss a... Uh, Missing out on college didn't happen ever, if you reflect back? I think in those days, I was just so busy. Yes. I, w- I was doing films back to back and Touchwood God like was this. very kind and I, I had hit after hit after hit. So I was on the roll. I just had no time to think. And, um, you know, you know how it is in the 80s and 90s. Yes. We used to sometimes, you know, work for two, three films in one day. And in I think multiple day. shifts, like, yeah. Multiple shifts. So I was working round the clock. I had a bunch of friends who were non-filmy, my, like my building friends, childhood friends. So I used to hang out with them on my, my days off. And uh, it's only later on in life that my friends were coming back from college. Those are the days that I felt like, yeah, yeah. it that's probably... You bunker, shoot and go yeah, for so, it. I mean, yes, there was a side of me which said, thank God I didn't have to study. <laughs> <laughs> But then there was a side of me that also felt that I missed out on those years. Yes. But uh, no regrets. No regrets. <laughs> oh, please, fans also don't have any regrets. <laughs> Neelam, when was it that you realized, uh, as you said, you started, we discussed, started so young and you saw that magnanimous success. When was the time you realized, hey, I'm a star? And it hits you. It does. Because you're also growing up with the number of films you are doing. But you're also growing up as an individual. I I think uh, I realized I was quite a big star when I had to say no to big makers, filmmakers, making great films and working with the huge stars because I didn't have dates. So that's when I realized that, okay, I'm doing something right. <laughs> But a woman saying no at that time, I have spoken to I didn't to have this. the dates, honestly. Yeah. How, 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 how was it? How could people... You know, I felt torn because um, my Masi was handling, you know, my work and um, I didn't have the typical manager or anything. And, you know, we used to request the, the filmmakers that, you know, can we can you just spare like 15 days in this month and 10 days here? Wow. Then Neelam can just do that film. Mm. Um, one film that I really regret, regret not doing was Pushpak. Um because I didn't have the dates, you know, that was like, damn. Oh. Yeah, it was such a beautiful it film, is. one of its kind. And, you know, I, I, I lost that opportunity, then you know, quite a few other films. Uh, but I think that's when I sort of realized, okay, yeah, uh, something's going right. But was no coming easily as in no because if you I know you told me that you don't have dates humanly it's not possible for you but for the people on the other hand who have to accept that no and coming from a female star how was it back then now there are so many of course bifurcations and you know 
you can say no in this way and that way but you saying no but i think it was understood because it was a genuine reason i mean it, i wasn't fibbing i wasn't i mean i would tell the makers that you know i'm dying to do this but my hands are tied yeah. i i i don't have the dates and you know it just cannot be managed you know and they would obviously understand uh but yes i mean i had to say no to quite a few and and my heart broke saying no to those films there was this cute college girl romantic image you held for so long like romance and you were synonymous on screen there was this you know neelam the songs and everything <laughs> what else would i do i was young i was coming okay i would i would most of my 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 characters were the same yeah because i was so young so young i was doing the similar thing and i was very lucky because i also got like tremendously amazing songs of course you know which were huge <laughs> and massive massive hits massive hits so i was very very lucky so yeah so i think i was just typecast and put into those you know roles the the young bubbly cute chirpy as we call them cute see cute see cute see the word uh and yeah college love stories the typical was it a time when of course later part in the career you wanted to break free of the image but it does become difficult because you become synonymous with a certain image i think i was very happy doing what i was doing <laughs> this is probably the <laughs> most honest answer nobody is giving me gyan i think i was i was not looking to do anything else if it came my way great but i was very happy doing what i was doing <laughs> that that dancing happens. around the trees and romancing i mean hey i, I no complaints <laughs> and the films are doing, doing well, well. <laughs> so who's, who's complaining either yeah no complaints no, i was okay. very happy doing what i was doing <laughs> when was it neelam that you finally figured out that okay films it is i'm staying here nothing is changing i'm the star and then comes the barrage of you know uh handling that 90s era as as i was telling i was talking to madhuri ma'am and she told me what girls working today of course the scenario is completely different my only co female companion was just my hair stylist we didn't even have the yeah. changing vanity vans and stuff how was it i just mentioned it in a previous interview saying that you know it's so nice today to see so many women on the set you know be it writers directors yes. um camera everywhere lighting everywhere. As everywhere. A, you know the the assistants she's right because um in those days it was like my mom or my masi who would accompany me if there was another cast member from mm. the cast a female and my hair stylist that was it everyone else was male so um did it make me uncomfortable no um it's just that now it's a different scenario i mean look at you sitting here look at her sitting there you know it's, it's earlier yeah. it was just men, men dominated by you know the industry yeah, was dominated by men it. yes um how you just mentioned like your uh, co companions were your family and of course uh, that's how you were shooting was there now when you like see this the new entourage and the system we see today everyone has a huge cloud of 10 20 people traveling behind them to reach how how do you see the difference because you have seen eras like decades of changing scenes okay you're asking me okay my personal thing yes your personal and and entourage looks really cool <laughs> i think it looks great <laughs> it makes Follow the me. person look like a star you have your body guys you have your makeup yeah, yeah i love it it looks super cool but me as a person i can't bear having anyone around me <laughs> i can vouch for you this you know so i mean even when i'm shooting and the makeup man and the hairdresser they you touch up in this and i'm like just just go just leave me alone <laughs> let me do Move my away. thing yeah so i'm just it's great to have an entourage you know if the producer can afford it why not but um <laughs> yeah yeah personally it's not your i'm not used to it i mean in in the 80s and the 90s we had makeup dada um my my hairdress and my spot boy that was it that was more more than, more than enough. enough 
<laughs> मतलब काफी काफी था मेरे लिए <laughs> Why is it Neelam that we all today are so much in awe and love with that era and the stars because whenever I interview anyone from the 90s I think you guys are one cool bunch candid unfiltered brave to answer questions even if they are controversies you people there is I don't see a chip in your you know armor you just take it like yeah it happened and yeah we move on what makes you the different I think I think I think it's it's just uh, in those days it was just so different it was more carefree um there was less judgment let me put it this way yes we had um the 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 critics obviously reviewing mm. our films and we had um you know a few filmy magazines and of course they were and we were petrified the of them honestly we were really petrified of Can them Can I interject were you afraid of all of course the gossips and the items which keep on appearing was it also because it, sometimes it the articles that were written yes. and put out there whenever cross checked yes. it was just written and put out there <laughs> so and then you <laughs> know just he said not she said yeah. yeah i mean that was one thing that i was very scared of but otherwise it was very simple there was a certain simplicity innocence um which i loved and i miss but having said that social media also today you know comes with its pros and cons yes, you know it it's does. great you know for um for me being um in retail being you know a yes. jeweler it's great you know for my brand it's great you know for an actor to put yourself out there you you know you get endorsements and it's that you know everything has its pros and cons and you can so, put the narrative right as you said if anything is saying anything wrong about you you can use the platform and put into the rumors or whatever it is but back then uh, i remember i was asking someone i'm like if i go uh, not to name the actor but <laughs> i asked someone you can name the actor it's fine <laughs> <laughs> I want to know the actor <laughs> but no I'll okay, tell you the anecdote no I can see I- I'll tell you later it was a fun anecdote I'm like if I go by the rumors and the magazines you almost dated everyone and the actor is like yeah even I got to know I dated everyone <laughs> I want to know how that possible how was it like with the link ups and with the rumors because it is very sensitive and especially at that time for female actresses to just link them up with someone because we were an image conscious industry I, for a very long time you know I'll be honest I'm not one of those people who say that oh you know you just ignore it no it I mean it I'm the kind of person if something is written negative about me I take it to heart I'm yes, not so. one of those people who can say that oh it doesn't matter it does. you know they'll write whatever they want to write they'll say what they whatever they want to say even today on social media sometimes you know people can be nasty I I would be a liar to say it doesn't affect me or bother me i mean after i'm bothered and i've i've coped with it and i've dealt with it i delete and i block <laughs> but you have to go through that gauntlet of emotions because yeah. it does affect you you are human and yeah. we often ignore in the process of dealing somebody as a celebrity or a star that hey it does i just feel this matter. this is it's internet uh this instagram has made the world a smaller place and the access to the stars and you know the superstars is is right there it's like you you you, you yeah there is within the reach but i also miss the time when those actors were not within the reach as in like the aura of i think so i think ranbir is someone who is not yeah. on social media yeah i think he's probably the only one who's not on social yeah, media yeah he's not on social media ranbir yeah. saif yeah there are very few people who don't want to be on social media they they love the mystique they love you know there is a certain quality of exactly i think yeah. that's their personal choice yeah. there's there's no right way or, or wrong, wrong way, way of doing something whatever whatever works for you you were so candid and honest when um, in the fabulous life you spoke about uh, your daughter's stress with social media and how you wanted her to be the first you wanted to be the first person to talk to her about a certain chapter in your life um how as a parent is it for you because you're shooting a reality show there are cameras around it's you it's the most difficult thing you know because this is an incident which happened you know a long time back now she's grown up mm-hmm. and uh, and i was just narrating this incident to the creatives and they were like 
Neelam, will you talk about it because he's, on the show? It's very important. My first reaction was like, no chance, no way. <laughs> I mean, I do understand it's reality, but this much of reality. Um, but they were like, it's, you know, look at this story, you know. I it's mean, a conversation so, starter. Exactly. So I... Um, I try my best to keep her away from this world. Yes. And it's not like she's really dying to be part of it or she's even interested remotely. To be honest with you, she sort of shies away from, you know, the limelight and you know sometimes if we're getting clicked when we're out she's she can't bear it. So, you know, she she's like total opposite. You know, and and also I keep her away from it because It's a you know, choice if she wants to be here or not. Ultimately. And also, I, I just feel that, you know, as long as I can, yes. keep her away from the social media yes. business as long as I can. You know, she's 12 today and, you know, in another two, three years. Anyhow, teenagers. <laughs> exactly. I mean, she she goes through Instagram on my phone. Okay, but but what is she she looking at? She's looking at those puppy dog reels and <laughs> <laughs> arts and crafts. It, so it, she's it, so she's in that yeah, zone. No. Uh, so I made her watch um, her first Hindi film. Um, first, I started making her watch uh, Student of the Year. Okay, and you know, right in the beginning, you know, Siddharth is without his shirt, and <laughs> I was coming to <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, and she's like, uh, Mama. Do I have to watch this? <laughs> so I said, okay, baby, let's watch another Hindi film. So uh, then I I put on Rocky and Rani that she sat through and she really, really enjoyed it. Mama <laughs> <laughs> just said we are not supposed to see these things. Having said that, I mean, she's not watched Bollywood Wives. Uh, because, I was coming to that. Yeah, like, she's, has she? She hasn't watched it. She's like watched a scene or two with, mm. with Johan. And because Johan and her, she used to, they, they used to hang out together when they were tiny. So like she's seen a couple of scenes, but then uh, the minute, you know, the profanities start, <clears throat> pause. <laughs> Why? Not, Not yet. Not that she doesn't know the words. It's just you whatever know. you said you can in your capacity hold. Why not? Yeah, the amount I can hold back. I don't think it's like my friends do say that you're trying to protect her too much. I look at it differently and I just feel that, you know, uh, if uh, as much as I can sort of, you know, push back and delay it, why not? Yeah, and does it come from the space that you started, Vituya? That's a very good question. No, no. I just feel that I, I don't think there's anything wrong in it. I just feel that... Um, I feel a child should be concentrating on, you know, reading, watch your cartoons or whatever you're interested in. I think social media right now, there's no need. And there's no need for them to be, if she has been clicked, there's no need for her to be reading comments or anything. Exactly. So that is something which I avoid. That's that's nice because I, I spoke um, before you uh, happened to meet Seema and we were talking about Johan and how she also can be yeah. her situation and stuff. And she was telling me that for me all the time it was whatever the world is saying before the world tells, I'm going to tell them because the yeah. world is anyhow going to tell them so many versions. 100%, and I agree. Like I don't want that. And that is my only uh, grief with social media is this, that before you come and tell my child, I will. It's fine. That is true. That's yeah. hence, that's why... Um, You know, my friends say that, you know, you're trying to protect her too much. It's not. It's, I don't think so. I think there's a there's a, there's a time for everything. everything. And I just feel today children are just growing up so fast because of, it's not only social media. I feel even at school, you know, oh, yes. they're making them more independent. Yeah, it's different. It's, it's, it is a different world. We have to yes. admit we are in a different world. Even the generation next to... Us, I would say. It's a completely different way we are growing up. It is. For this shy Neelam, why did this Neelam agree for the reality TV? I mean, how did this Neelam agree that, hi, I'll have 20 cameras in my house and you can shoot me, <laughs> but I might have a meltdown? <laughs> oh. So, first of all, okay, I said no. Then I agreed. Then after agreeing, I was like, why the hell did I agree? <laughs> 
whilst we were shooting the first day of shoot i was mortified because i had 30 men in my living room okay light men putting up lights i, was, I took a whole video of the choppers and the lights and i was like why have i done this okay then um when i'd be shooting with bhavna mahip and seema and we'd be chatting and the cameras would be rolling 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 we'd be shooting we were like who's going to watch this <laughs> technically we had, everyone yeah we had no idea but yes back then yes it, if you look at it on the paper who would have thought who would have thought i mean honestly i i, I think karan johar is a genius <laughs> for putting us out there and thank you karan but I mean we didn't realize that it would blow up like this it was it's just incredible i mean season 1 season 2 the kind of love that we got my favorite is season 3 i'll tell you <laughs> uh, see, uh, because neelam has mentioned season 2 i have to bring up neelam what's with you and all the good looking men how come they end up only getting you you only spot them how only neelam spot good looking men i need to know please nation wants to no, know no, today no. you know what Like I said in season three, I think it's just the universe. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, it's the universe. You know, I go on holiday, and these men—they're just—it's like a <laughs> magnet. <laughs> <laughs> What do I do? You know, and I mean, they all make fun of me, but it—it it doesn't happen in Mumbai. <laughs> it's only when we travel. Bombay guys, where are you at? <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> I don't know. It's like am I giving out those vibes? I mean, really. <laughs> That's just the universe. So it's a sign that I have to go on more girly holidays and yeah, I mean, I need to ask Samir. How come he's not reacting to this? <laughs> I was I was coming to that. Like we have a Neelam who's what I could figure out by now is a very sensitive, a little reserved Neelam. And then we have a Samir who doesn't like camera and limelights interviewing him is a different ball game he is not interested unless it's no, required no samir is it samir, or you tell me who is the samir we see okay samir has no filter at all oh yeah he's in an introvert but once he gets talking <laughs> boy does he get talking and he's very clear they are very he's he's very sort of um he has no filter He doesn't care. Like he will, he will call a spade a spade. And it takes a lot to be unfiltered on a reality TV where he's very comfortable admitting that I can't do these Bollywood parties. Like I'll be there, so but when I'm shooting with Samir, I get very scared <laughs> because because I ended- ah, because I don't know what he's going to say. Because at home, you know, I'm on my phone sometimes, and he's overhearing. like the gossip or whatever i'm like i always tell him before shoot babe don't mention that thing huh babe don't mention that thing huh? and what you heard that day don't mention that just for her to stay he's like are chill <laughs> don't worry but i worry a lot <laughs> I, i i love him being on the show he's like i don't want to attend the party it's over for me i'm leaving i'm by him like <laughs> yeah yeah party see that's one thing about him he he doesn't enjoy it it's not his scene He's very happy, you know, sitting with three, four people, having an inter- intellectual discussion. That's amazing. That is right. Yeah, and once he starts talking, trust me, he doesn't stop. Oh, of course, I know. If he's enjoying the topic, I know that. Like, and if and he's very well informed <clears throat> when he starts talking, then he will give yes. you the pros and cons of it. If you can take it, be my guest. Yes, Neelam, you have this beautiful friendship with Ekta Kapoor. I mean, in all the seasons which I think has come across. So I have two questions. I'll take the first one. why it was an ekta with whom you d- could have had made maybe a film splashy comeback or maybe you know a very big television soap opera did it ever cross your mind never crossed my mind uh like come doing making a comeback never crossed my mind um she had never approached me i mean we like i in my head i was done with you know acting or you know cameras and limelight and everything i was done i was very happy you know designing my jewelry in my office coming home doing my thing comfy <laughs> can i ask sorry i'm i'm totally diverting from my question guys how do you achieve that comfort neelam that 
you're on the peak of your career you decide to okay let it go get married and of course life takes course and things happen but to never crave for that attention oh again. my god how you know but the transition the transition from films to sitting in an office you know learning the trade uh being a jewelry uh designer learning everything from my dad it was the most difficult transition of my life i mean it's because your stardom is taken away from you it was my choice but my choice was to leave when i was at the top uh and not just fade away but uh it was so so difficult because all of a sudden that recognition is gone yes those phone calls have stopped interviews have the stopped parties everything just parties not so much i really wasn't uh, socializing involved. i mean yeah yeah it was just like i i got sucked into another world and i was just away from everything and it happened so quickly and there was there was a time where i you know when you're on set it's it's buzzing you're meeting people it's so much fun it's a different you i mean it, yeah and sitting in an office with like a like a 9 to 6 job yeah. let's put it this way it was in the beginning it was very hard to sort of come come to terms with you know i've i've given it all up it was very very hard so i used to get offers on and off sporadically but you know i had to say no because i wanted a i wanted a clean sort of break from it because you know you do that one film one off film and then you're seen yet not seen you fade away so uh it was very very hard it it's was a very, very hard it's a beautiful life lesson and i'm talking this only on the perspective of being a woman we can always restart and start oh, fresh and yeah i mean it takes a lot yes. of courage a lot of courage yes. to yes be there first deciding to quit when you're literally on top of your game and then again reinventing and then again reinventing oh my god it's 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 been a roller coaster right so when people ask me sometimes you know what are the next plans what's your next plan i mean i mean it's enough i mean i think you know what has Her happened life. i mean you i think it's it's enough that i'm doing and i've and i've done also i mean it gives me god you know yeah. god knows what what god has in store for me next you know uh, I, and i'm the kind of person i want to do everything you know whatever comes my way you know if it's um like i did a bit of interiors in between i did that i have uh, listen of course i've got my jewelry now i've got bollywood housewives well not housewives sorry bollywood Wood wives, wives. Uh, of course so <laughs> uh, yes. we are only going for four and five season planning it's okay we'll figure it out so i i think my 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 you know plate is full right now my hands are full neela ma'am on the sun if you would not like to answer but you spoke about your personal experiences on the show in third i think the third season why i said was very special for me and i said this to see man and say this on record brave of all of you to come <laughs> out with your relationships your past yeah, your traumas i think it's the hardest thing to do look why you did know, you choose sunila my only question is not because like i told you uh, i i was discussing uh, just a conversation with the creatives and i said you know you won't believe You know, this is what happened the other day, and they were like, "This is an unbelievable story." I mean, never because made splash a mountain. I think that's so much dignity in your silence at that. I time. mean, I was, I, I, you know, resisted it a lot because I was, uh, I've never spoken about it, and uh, they said, you know, trust me, women are going to yes. relate to it. You'll be respected. You'll be, you'll come out a winner. do it i was like okay i trust you guys come on go for it and not just that because the conversations which started after that and i read so many pieces and articles i just found it profoundly beautiful that somebody in your stature in your position f- takes up the stage and says that hey life happens you know what i've gotten a lot of dms from women saying that you know it's so nice that you spoke about it because not everyone or being a celebrity would never and you you need to have courage oh, yes and it just makes us feel that even a celebrity even if someone famous can go through this so it makes us feel good and it just gives us that strength 
and i think the beautiful lesson is that life doesn't stop it's tough yes you got to restart and so you did <sighs> i've like restarted and restarted, restarted and restarted. it's going on <laughs> chugging along and <laughs> for me that's the beauty of it i mean of course tough days tough phases tough of chapters uh, no as i say uh, in our school they used to teach us na no crying over this milk which has always been split so it's, it's okay you have to move forward and every experience in your life makes you you learn hopefully you learn and makes you stronger and what better than a stronger woman trust me you can't break it easily <laughs> it just doesn't come easy that's what I, and what what is bringing you back to films before we close this this um i haven't said anything i know but why well because uh, honestly i haven't received uh, i haven't gotten any something that's Earth shattering um offers so uh yeah i i'm at this stage comfortable happy doing what i'm doing i'm not craving to do a movie or or a show or anything i'm 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 happy in this zone doing bollywood vibes <laughs> but if anything lands which space do you see yourself in elam because i think uh, actresses beyond a certain point or age up until last couple of years i would say the same roles the same templates but now roles are written for them which respects them for so their it's so funny that you're asking me this because right now i'm what i'm watching buckingham murders and i think you know i think kadina is just doing a brilliant job you know if you ask me what what kind of film yes. or what kind of show would you like to do I think something like what she's she's doing right now. Where well, nobody's forcing you to look ten years younger for think, the sake I of it. I think you know she's she's just owning it. She's um she's she's looking great, uh, super confident, and I think she's doing a great job. So if you ask me, I think today, yeah, you know the kind of stuff that she's doing. Hell yeah, I would like to do Make that. Makers, take a note. <laughs> she's letting you know just in yeah, case if think, anyone is looking think, for references. I think she's created this niche for herself so beautifully, and she's owning it, and she's she's doing a fab job. As we close this chat, Neelam, oh, it's such a feel good chat. I have to tell you, I I have walked in and I had hundred and twenty film questions. I won't lie. I sat with you, and I'm like, I think there is more about life I can talk to you because there are very few people who live a life, live a life with. dignity yet in public eye and every day to get That's up and face the world with a smile and own up whatever it has been through ha. it takes you got tears to my <laughs> eyes oh. no I, I, thank you gosh that's very sweet <laughs> no i think for me that is very inspiring because uh, we often are shamed for talking about our stories our plights i think you our know, troubles uh, after a point you shy away from things and you brush things under the carpet yeah. <clears throat> and you know sometimes in life to talk about and and to sort of you know uh face what you've gone through many many years back it takes a lot and i think once you're done with that whew, yeah it's a sigh of relief and you're done with it and i think it's liberating and anyone out there of course <laughs> for anyone who's watching this anyone out there it's it's never too late to restart it it's, it's it's never and another lesson i think i'll take away today is that I always fear that what it would be to leave your game when you're on top of it. Will you be able to bounce back? I think you have given me a lot of clarity that <laughs> this is always a bounce back. There always. Yeah, there's a bounce back and you know you will hit that low at some point again. It's okay. It's 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 all part of it. Well, that is full. Thank I'm very you. Happy. Thank it's, you. This was a great chat. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being kind. Thank you for being so empathetic and guys manifestation notice what she wants to do please put in the offers and all the bombay guys in case if you are not in getting the magnet neelam charm working here <laughs> international holidays it is we are going to get yeah follow us them. girls on a holiday <laughs> thank you neelam thank you thank that was you. great thank you makes a lot thank you hi this is neelam kothari soni and you're watching me on bollywood bubble